conversation taking 30 minutes to seek out joy. And today I am excited that I have Miss Yolanda Booker with us tonight to talk about joy as well as conquering fear. So it's awesome. So wow, people have jumped right in. Hello, Miss Dale and Shante and Ivanya. I'm setting up our watch party so that we can be fully connected. <laughs> Here we go, here we go. Yes, all right. And our watch party is all set up. People are jumping on, fantastic. Mm. Give us a thumbs up, give us a hug. Let us know that you are in the watch party. Hello, Miss Bertina Pelzer. I see you. Yes, Shannon and Laverne and Carla. Fantastic. Hello, hello, hello. It is awesome. Welcome to our conversation about overcoming fear. And I'm holding this fantastic book, God's Chosen Son. And the author, Yolanda Booker, is with us this evening. And it's an opportunity for her to give us some practical tools on how she, in her story, overcame fear. Now, we're not going to tell you the story because we want you to go to the blog and actually read the details of her story. But this conversation is about practical tools. Yes, hello, Joanne. Oh, she says, you look amazing. She <laughs> says, you look amazing. Doesn't she? She looks fabulous. Yes. So, Yolanda, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, everybody. I'm excited. I'm so excited. Um, my name again, is Yolanda Booker. I am the proud wife of Ronald Booker of 22 years. Mm -hmm. I am the mother of three beautiful children, Niel, Ronald, and Naquil. And I also have three beautiful granddaughters, Zaniah, Ryan, and Mia. I am. Um, I also am the founder of the Nicole Jamal Booker Foundation. And as you said already, I am the author of God's Chosen Son. I'm excited to be here. Yes. And you know what? I so appreciate um, you taking the time and the power of your story of God's chosen son. And as you, um, those who are watching, log into our Fearless Stories on Living Strong LLC's website and actually read the power of her story. Yeah. But what I want her specifically to talk about tonight is when you have devastation, when you have trial, when you have struggle and you must push past those moments, what do you pull on to become fearless to push past those moments in time? Yolanda, can you can you help us understand that? Sure, I sure can. First, to push past your fear, you have to, for me, I had to, of course, prayer is number one but also just evaluate my relationship with God, knowing that I would not be able to get through that kind of trauma or crisis by myself. Um, so the key for me was really tapping into my belief, what I believed all these years, you know, because it's like when trauma hits, it really exposes what you believe, what's really inside of you. And so I had to really depend on God as my ultimate tool, tool to get through it because people couldn't help me at that point. The most important thing is that I tap into who God was to me and to pray my way through. And you also, know what? I just want to pause right there because that right there is a whole word. 
when we are in front of devastating moments, it's that opportunity for us to really know what we believe because it's not gonna be the friend. What do you believe about your relationship with God for you? That is powerful. Yes. The other thing that I had to do was learn. I had to unlearn some things and I had to learn some things. And one of the things I had to learn was how to trust people and become vulnerable enough to let people help me. And that meant family, friends, and ultimately counseling for me to admit to myself that I was not going to make it physically by myself. I knew I had the Lord with me, but physically I needed help. I needed someone to guide me through these emotions that I was getting through all of these, all of these thoughts and all of these things that I was going through. I had to learn to be vulnerable. And that's a very, very hard thing to do when Mm -hmm. you're not a very vulnerable person or when you're deemed to be the strong person for you to admit that not so much that you're weak, but that you need help is very hard for some of us. And it was very hard for me. And you know what, Yolanda? I actually have told, especially sister friends, that you know what? You don't give up your power by allowing somebody else to help you. You're still strong. You're still strong. You don't lose your strength by asking for help. It actually shows more wisdom. But that comes with learning and unlearning Mm -hmm. because so often you've been taught to be strong and not ask for help that Mm -hmm. you have to unlearn that. Yes. Yes. I love it. Unlearn some things and learn Learn some new things. things. And the the last thing that I would say that helped me was to acknowledge that it's a process. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be overnight. It's not going to be what people think. Some people are understanding. Some won't. Some are coming with you on the journey, some won't, but it's a process and that I had to allow the process to happen and to ask God and those that love me to walk through the process with me. Again, it's been seven years, you know, through that process, really almost um, 12 years. However, I'm still learning. So I can't say I got it all together, but those are my tools. I, <laughs> I can't say. We're all still learning. <laughs> I can't say I got it all, but it's, it's it's better. I always say one of the things I say all the time, and for those who know me, will hear me say when I was in the thick of grief is I'm on the other side of better. And that just yes. means that I'm not there, but I'm better. So yes. I'm grateful for that. And that echoes your, your heart of recognizing it's not a light switch. It is absolutely a journey. And absolutely. To connect back to what you just said before that, are you willing to do the work to unlearn and learn new in the process of the journey because it's going to take time? Sheesh, yes. (laughs) (laughs) Powerful, powerful nuggets that you just shared in really how do you move past fear? Yes. Being willing to ask for help, that it doesn't compromise your strength just because you have asked for help. Yes. And recognizing it is a process and that that process will take time. Yes. And there will be those who will be able to stay in the process with you and those who won't. But that does not mean you compromise your process. Yes. And the third thing is what's your core belief about the father? What it will bring you to really understand your core belief. Three amazing nuggets that I feel absolutely parallel the process of not only fear, overcoming fear and becoming fearless, pushing past hard moments, but it also ties pretty closely to If we were to talk about in our challenge right now, in the month of April, our calendar, our fearless calendar challenge, every month in our calendar, there's a different principle that we use and talk about. And this month's principle 
of becoming fearless is actually using the intentional tool of joy. And the, the three points you just made about fearlessness could also be key in accessing joy. But what is what are your thoughts? What would you tell people right now in how do you keep hold on to and and utilize joy when things are hard? Well, the first key I think for me was to really be honest with myself about what brought me joy. Because so often we do all these things and we learn all these things, you know, shopping and all these tangible things. But when you're grieving and when tragedy hits, you realize those things are not soothing. Those things do not take you through. So I had to reevaluate what brought me joy. And once I realized what brought me joy, I had to be true to myself about who I was and also who I was not. Oh. Because there, oh. there's things that you go through in life that you feel that you are. But again, when you go through tragedy um, and things that hardships, it brings about um, one of the things that's very, very close to my heart from this um, journey is grief brings about a sense of insecurity. Because when you lose something, it causes you to change. In some way, shape or form, you change. And sometimes you don't recognize that change and you have to find out what that change is. And when you find out that change, then you'll know what brings you joy. Because again, you're not the same person you once were. So with losing a child, I wasn't who I once was anymore. And I was very insecure in every part of my life. I have to be honest. Um, as well as it looked, I was very, I became very insecure. A lot of things that I thought I knew and I was confident about all of a sudden felt like I knew nothing, felt like I didn't know who I was. It was a true identity crisis for me. I had to really search and really, really depend on the Lord to tell me and to help me realize who I was after that tragedy. The other thing that brought me joy was just serving. I love people. So serving God's people is the what brings me joy, which brings me to where I am now. I am a master's student at Missio Seminary, um, second career, because I want to be a um, counselor, a licensed professional counselor and help those that's going through grief. So I am there right now. And that brings me joy because that's my heart to make to help people bring people hope after yeah. the tragedy. And you know what? You just warm my heart. And I wish you could see the, the threads. People are loving this. Laverne says that right there, what brings me joy? Being able to ask that question and, and really connect with the truth about yourself. Absolutely. Asking for help does not make you weak. It, I, I'm loving this communication and how people are connecting with your message. It is amazing. And as I listen to your journey and how when we acknowledge in his word and he says that we recognize that everything may not feel good, but mm. he will take all of it yes. individually the moment may not feel good, but he will take all of it and put it together to reveal good for us and for his glory to happen. And you are an example of that. Coming on the other side of better. Yes. Now found a whole nother level of purpose that yes. would, you would not have ever even realized if you hadn't gone through and now reflecting back how you're better connected with what actually brings you joy and it wasn't the things. Yes, it absolutely. The things. Yes, and being able to see and serve outside of yourself. Yes. Being willing to acknowledge that I had insecurities, but going back to what you sh shared just earlier, recognizing my core belief in who God says I am. Yes. That identity crisis he will bring when we ask God, show me me. Woo! Oh, wow. 
<laughs> that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother elephant right there. <laughs> that's a whole nother thing. God show me because for sure you most times you don't like what you see, what he shows you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> But yeah. he works with you until you get to a place that you can accept and move on. But it's not a pretty place. It's not. It's not. It's not. But again, when you become fearless and, and trust the character of the father, that I can trust his character when he shows me me, yeah. I can trust him with that. And what I believe to be true about him, he will bring me out on the other side. Yes. And an amazing story to tell at the same time yeah. and become a master level. And now is it counseling? Yes, I'll, I'll have a master's in counseling. And also um, I'm in the program that will prepare me to be a licensed professional counselor in the state of Pennsylvania. Yep. Yes. Look at God. <laughs> it's amazing. He's amazing. He is amazing. So now I want you to tell everybody, how can they get the book? How can they get the book? Okay. So um, God's Chosen Son is available on Amazon.com. It is available in paperback and it's also available in ebook. So you can also download it. I also um, usually have the book on me, of course, in our conditions right now. And I'm not seeing many people, but you can, you are welcome to order the book online. Or you can reach out to me, and when conditions are better, I would make sure that you get a copy. And actually, in the um, post that you're watching right now, if you click that Amazon button, it will take you straight to Amazon. Yes. Um, to be able to get the book. It's live right in the post. Ah, Yolanda, thank you. Thank you so oh. much for your heart, for your authenticity, for your transparency as we struggle with and can battle against fear because it is a specific tool used by the enemy when we allow it to become a part of our spirit yes. to stifle and control and hold us back. And your story and your spirit and your victorious journey shows evidence of when you push past fear, what God will do not only for you, but for everybody you are going to be counseling in the future. Yeah. So thank you, sister. Thank you so much for having me, sister. Amen. I love, Amen. I love you too. So now the challenge is on. In the month of April, it is take 30. Joy is an intentional mindset. It is not about an emotion. It is not about a roller coaster. Yes. We are challenging everybody for the next 30 days to choose joy and to take a picture of your joy moment. And let's flood the news feeds with what yeah. the evidence of the children of God, what it looks like. In our 5 at 5 post a couple of days ago, I said he has been training us for this moment right here. Yes. It's now time for us to rise up and show the world what it looks like to have radiant faith, believing beyond the moment. We have been in training. It is now time to show up and it's an opportunity for you to connect. So post your joy picture. Use the hashtag that's on the screen. Take 30 FCLG and tag me so that I can see your joy. <laughs> picture. We love you. Thank you so much for joining the joy conversation. And we will see you tomorrow with another joy story. Thank you again, Yolanda. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.